Hi, welcome. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at different ways of doing year over year or period over period calculations. That question comes up more often than any other question on the forum. It's it's not a daily question. It's at least three, four times uh, times a week that we see this question come up. And it comes up in, a, in a, a lot of different ways. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you five different ways of making that calculation. So we're gonna start from the easiest, simplest way, and it does have limitations up to a, the most complex uh, is the, uh, the fifth way that we're gonna look at today. Well, uh, before we get started, maybe I ought to introduce myself. Uh, I know most of you. Uh, my name is Jim Daner. I am a three-time Pablo Visionary, uh, a seven-time forums ambassador. I also co-lead uh, the Tableau Newbie User Group and the Nashville Tug. And I want to thank you for coming out and, uh, and uh, visiting us today. We're going to start with the simplest method, and that we're going to use a table calculation. We're going to use a text table. And the text table is nothing more than it's got an order date on it. And we're looking at the year of the order date. And I've got categories in it, and I'm applied sales uh, in that uh, uh, I've added sales into the uh, uh, into the biz. Now we're going to use a, a table calculation. Very easy to do. I just open up this drop down, select quick table calculation percent difference, and Tableau will run through the calculation, doing a year over year calculation going uh, across the columns. I'm going to put sales back in here so we can see that, and let me put it this way just uh, so we can kind of see what we're doing here okay so you see we've got sales in each year by category and then we've got the year over year sales percentage growth or the some people will call it a variance or a growth uh, uh the growth percentage and all this is is uh, 170,000 over 157,000 and so on across the table and that's fine if this meets your needs and it gives you everything that you want, my advice is stop here and use this calculation. The simplest calculation that you're going to see today, it's very easy to use, but it comes with some drawbacks. And let's take a look at what those drawbacks might be. We see we have year uh, of order date in, in here. And most times we have users come out and they say, well, I've done this calculation, but when I filter and I want to filter and I only want to see 2021, I put in 2021 and I don't get I don't get any that difference. I don't get any variance. You know, what did I do wrong? Well, this is the fundamental problem with thinking about what filters do. Each one of your worksheets has a separate data table. There's a data table that underlies this, this worksheet and it's different for each one of your worksheets. That data table is a subset of the total data you loaded into uh, Tableau. And you create that data table first by putting dimensions on the rows and columns, and you create the structure for that data table. And then you can filter that data table and reduce the amount of data that's in that, in that table. Well, once the data is filtered out of that table, you can't use it in calculations in that table. So we filter out all the data for 2020 and, and for that matter, 2019 and 2018. The only data that's in the table is 2021 data. So we can't do a year over year calculation because there, there isn't any data for 2021. Well, that's a, a fundamental problem if you uh, needed, that, uh, needed that calculation or you needed that data. The other problem that people run into is they've got a column here of blank data. And they say, well, I, I understand I don't have a year over year calculation because I don't have any 2017 data. So all I want to do is I want to hide that column. I don't want that, I don't want that in there. And they'll come back and they'll say, well, I want to hide that column. And when they hide that column, it also hides the 2018 data. And now there's no reference point for that 8.48% growth. So you've got 170,000 dollars worth of furniture sales over what they sold in 2018, but you can't see 2018 sales. So those are two of the problems that users face and say, well, I can't use this calculation. And we understand that. That's fine. But once again, my advice is if this gives you everything that you want in your chart, stop here because it's the easiest calculation you're going to see today.
as we step up one level, when we go to the next level, and this is the one I recommend most often, is uh, I recommend that users use LOD expression, or actually multiple XO LOD expressions for current year and for prior year based on a fixed end date. And uh, the date that we're going to use, the fixed end date we're going to use, is I'm going to use this expression right here, the max order date. And I'll show you where that is. It's just this calculation. And this is what's called a table LOD. You can see the uh, squiggly brackets here that says, hey, this is, a, this is an LOD expression. And the max order date looks at the entire table and it takes the last order date, the latest order date in the entire table. And for the data I've got here, that last date is December 30th, 2021. And now we're going to use that date to calculate our current year sales and our prior year sales. Okay. And the, our current year sales, based on that max or, order date, is nothing more than this. And it, it may look a little complicated, but it's it, it's really not all that complicated. All it says is uh, it too is an LOD expression. It says for each category, look at each category separately. If the date trunk at the year level of the order date, and date trunk is going to return the first value in that year. So it's going to come back and it's going to say, hey, at the year level, the first value is January 1st. If January 1st on the order date equals January 1st on that max date, we're in the same year. And if the day, the date trunk of the day, the date itself of the order date is less than the date of the max order date, then I want those values and uh, refer to sales for those. And that is what you see here, our current, our current sales. We're gonna do the same thing for the prior year sales. And it, there's only one difference in this calculation. We're gonna do the same calculation. The one difference we're gonna add is we're gonna use inside our date trunk calculation on the max date, we're going to look at the prior year. We do that by using a data add at the year level minus one. So we're looking at one year prior to the max date, last year's same date last year. And we're going to compare it at the year level and we're going to compare it at the day level also. And we get their prior year sales. Okay, well, that was pretty easy to do. And we're going to do one more thing. Is we're going to do our year over year calculation. And it's nothing more than taking our current year sales versus our prior, uh, minus our prior year sales divided by the prior year sales. It's just a variance calculation. Okay, we've got that data and it looks just fine. Well, some users will say that's fine and it's good, but I need to be able to make that date variable. I don't have the last date. I don't want to use the max date in the data set, or I want to give my user the option of changing that last date in the data set. So we can add a parameter. And all I've done here is I've created a parameter and it's called the uh, end date. And uh, just very simply, when I created that parameter, this is all it looks like. It's a date parameter and I'll accept any value in there. And it's a dropdown and they can they can put in any value that they would choose. And uh, the value I've got in here right now is last date of 2020. And then, we create those same calculations with one exception. And all we're going to do here is instead of having the max date in the data set, we're going to put in that parameter date. So if the year of the order date is the same as the year of the, the, year of the parameter and the day is less than the uh, date of the parameter, that's our current year sales. And we'll do the same thing for the prior year. He said confidently, okay. We'll do the same thing for the prior year. Just like we did before, we're going to decrement. We're going to take one year off of this off of this parameter date, and we're going to compare our dates at the year level and the day level for that. And then we're going to do that same percent difference. Very easily done, OK? Yes, I have to make three calculations. Yes, they're LOD expressions. But it's, it's very easily done. And I can come back in and I can change that date to anything. We're looking at December 20th. Let's look at October the 1st. And when we change it to October the 1st in the, our year-to-date sales, we can see what those values are. 
Okay. Now we'll get another user type that comes in and says, you know, that's great, Jim. Love it. Uh, but you know what I, I really want to do? I want to give my user the option of deciding whether they want to look at the month over month level or the year over year level, or maybe they're going to look at quarter over quarter or some other thing. How would I go about doing that? Well, let's take a look and add another parameter. We've already got the end date parameter here. Let's take a look at another parameter. And the parameter we're going to look at this time is, um, looks like this. And I just have two levels here. I've got the year level and the month level. And the value is year, value is month. I could have quarter in here. We could have uh, whatever in here. And I'm going to just change this to, uh, we want to look all the way through the month of uh, October. And this, these calculations, this, no great surprise here. This gets a little bit more complex. This is our current year calculation. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to read this parameter. And I'm going to say, if that thing is the year level, then I want to do this same calculation we've been looking at. I want to take a look at the current year sales, the day trunk at the year level, OK, off of the enter end date parameter, the parameter we just looked at and the date level is less than that, uh, that is my current year sales. Ex now, if this is month, I don't want to look at the year level. I want to look at the month level. I want to look at if the current, uh, for the current year, we want to look, or the current month, we want to look at the month of the order date versus the month of the end date. And we'd want to look at the day based on uh, the end date also, the day of end date, okay? And just to show you what's gonna happen here, I can look at month, okay? And we're looking at month over month, or we can look at year over year. And we've got the prior year, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing we did before, except we've got this complexity where I've got two different calculations. One, if the, uh, date level parameter equals year. We want to look at this calculation, which looks at the year level. Okay. If it looks at, if I change this to month, we then want to look at the month level. Okay. Very easily done. Very easily done. And we get this difference. And then uh, you guessed it, we're just going to look at the POP percent difference. And it's that same calculation. We're just looking at a difference calculation. We're looking at the current year sales minus the prior year sales divided by the prior year sales. That wasn't too hard. We've taken a look at essentially uh, three different ways of, of doing uh, year over year. We looked at one where we were using a table calculation. We looked at a second one where we were uh, looking at a fixed endpoint, and we took a look at a third one where we're going to vary the period, and we can look at we can look at uh, different uh, different levels. Now we run into an issue, and you may have had you may have had this with your own uh, with your own data, where you want to look at a running year over year. You don't want to look at a fixed endpoint. You don't want to say, hey, at the end of the year or the end of the month or the you know fifteenth of June. What's our year-to-date sales versus prior year to sales? But you want to be able to look at it on a running basis. Now that's going to present some issues. And because when we try to line up data and make data line up uh, on a year over year basis, uh, we've been working with LOD expressions. LOD expressions work at a record level. When we try to look across records, uh, that's when table calculations come in, and you may have tried to use a calculation that looks like a, you want to compare this year this year sales, and you'll do a a uh, a lookup that looks back 365 days, and you, you do something like a date difference uh, equals 365. But what what the problem that that arises is that you're looking across data using a single data source. And uh, it just, to be honest with you, it just plain it just plain doesn't uh, doesn't quite work that way. 
So what we need to do is we need to be able to take our data sources and uh, we need to be able to connect them together. Okay. And to connect them together, what I've done is taken the initial data source and I've made a copy of that data source. So I've got, I've got my first data source and then I've got a copy of that data source. And I've joined those two together where I'm keeping all the data from my initial data source. And I'm joining it together at the category level in the subcategory because I want the data to match up. I don't want to be adding data from furniture to data from telephones. You know, we want the categories to match, we want the subcategories to match. And then we're going to take a look at using a, we're going to calculate a join clause. And in our first data set, we're going to look at the year of order date. And we're going to join that to the copy of that data at the year minus one. So we're going to look, we're going to join this year to last year in our two data sets. And at the same time, we're going to look at the quarter level. So we're going to look at the quarter of the current year to the quarter of last year. So what we've done is we've taken a look at the data at the quarter level. We're looking at this year versus last last year, quarter to quarter match, category to category match, and subcategory to subcategory match. And when we do that, we can now uh, let me make sure I've got the right. There we go. We can now look at the sales of our prior year coming from one of the data sets and our current year coming from the other data set. So you can see that. Here, the $170,000 in 2018 sales match up with the prior year. We've matched those two up, 175, uh, 175 18 And we can compare 2018 to 2017. That's that's the whole objective of what we're, what we're trying to do here. And we can take a look and we can make a running calculation on that. We can look running year over year data. And because we've got the data connected the way we have the data connected, we're looking at the change on a running basis. And it works. There's a problem associated with it. As this data gets more and more complex and we start looking at lower and lower levels, there's voids in the data set. There's gaps in the data set and data doesn't line up. And what will happen is we expect this the data to be the same data. We expect those values to line up, but they don't line up. What we've done here is we've taken a look at this data. Okay. It's open. Okay. We've taken a look at this data. We've tried to do a join between the two down at the day level. And what happens at the day level, I might have sales this year, and, and we're doing this month over month again, or the year over year, changing the data by one year. I might have sales in a subcategory this year, but a year ago, I didn't have any sales in that subcategory at the day level. I might've had them at the quarter level, so I can still match at the quarter level, but I can't match at the day level. And these things don't line up anymore and we're not getting a good answer. So what we have to do is we have to come back and we have to scaffold the data to, to press out all of the voids in the data set. Okay, now this is getting to be a pretty advanced calculation and I gotta be honest with you, uh, if you're relatively new to Tableau, this might not be something that you're ready to do yet. But I created a date scaffold and the date scaffold uh, that we look at here is nothing more than all of the dates between all, all of the dates that are in the data set. And this data set runs from the 1st of January through uh, 2018 through the 1st of uh, January, 2022. And I've created that date scaffold and I joined that uh, date scaffold to the categories. I have to do this at each category level. So those join together 
and we use what's called a Cartesian join. And a Cartesian join uh, has a join clause of one equals one. And all that says is take every record in this data set and create and join it with and create a record with each data in that data set. And when we do that, uh, it explodes the data. And then I've got to come back and I've got to join that data back in to the raw data that we were just looking at. And that second uh, pause looks like this, where we're coming in and we're going, we're joining at the category level, all of the data from our GAFL data set to the raw data set. And I'm joining the date and we've got every date in this, uh, in our date scaffold here, to the order date that's coming off of our raw data. So now every date matches up with the date scaffold, and we're keeping all the dates in the date scaffold. And that date scaffold, the dates that we used in the date scaffold, becomes from the dates that we use in our analysis. Now that's a bit complex, and it's taken the data and it's exploded the data. But now all we have to do is we take a look at the two years worth of sales, our current year sales and our prior year sales from our scaffolded, our scaffolded data. And now they do match up and I can do that year over year calculation and I can take it down to any level in the data. Well, today, okay. We can take it down to, we can take it down to different levels here. So here's what I've done, I'm taking it down and then we're taking a look at category and we've taken this down, uh, we're looking at the year level. Now, today I wanted to talk about doing year over year analysis or period over period analysis. You can see that there's a lot of different ways of doing it. If you're new to Tableau and you're not experienced doing this type of data, I'm going to suggest that you start with, first of all, use a table calculation. And if it meets your needs, stop right there. If it doesn't meet your needs, then I'm going to suggest that you go on and do an LOD expression based on a fixed endpoint. And I gave you a couple different ways of uh, setting that fixed endpoint. Now, if that still doesn't meet your needs, you're, you're going to go to a fairly advanced calculation where you're going to copy your data set and join it to itself. And once again, when you start connecting data, as long as there's data at every level in every cell, you're it's complex, but it's not real, real difficult. But when we start introducing voids in the data set and we have to scaffold the data, we start exploding the data, the data set, it becomes a very involved calculation. So my advice to you is only go as far as you need to go. Okay. If you have to go to the full length, you've got two options. One, you're restructuring the data. If you can do that back at the data source, by all means, do it at the data source. It's easier that way. Uh, the second option is, is if you hang the scaffold the data, do it in Tableau Prep. Okay, and it will work much better in Prep and then bring that data into uh, Tableau, Tableau itself. Yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, all of what you have seen is already sitting out on my blog, and that's just uh, jimdaner.com. You'll find a lot of stuff out there. So, you know, search around. There's a, and there's a search. Uh, uh, a search option out there so you can search the data set on keywords and you can find uh, a lot of good things that might need your meet your needs but certainly this everything that we talked about here under year over year calculations it's the number one searched item on my uh, on my blog okay uh, there's a downloadable data set at uh, Tableau public and you can reach me at uh, my email address is uh, marketanalyticsllc at gmail.com. Thank you for your time. I really enjoyed it today.